Good afternoon. So in the summer of 2015, I embarked on an internship at the Leon Levy Preserve, and we were tasked with, getting, with finding our own project, field project. Because there were no iguanas in Eleuthera, I settled for studying the amoeba population that was there. So this study will focus on a population assessment and observation of two amoeba subspecies in the Bahamas. So what are amoebas? They're generally called forest runners around the world. They're in the Tidiae family. Locally, they're known as the blue tail lizards or lion lizards. They show some sort of um, sexual dimorphism, meaning that the males and females look differently. They are active diggers and borrowers, meaning that they make their home in the soil or in crevices of the rocks along the rocky shoreline. They, re they depend heavily on rainfall for reproduction, that meaning, meaning that re um, reproduction can be unpredictable. Okay, so in the Bahamas, we have 12 subspecies of Amiva aubrei and one full species found on Great Inagua Key, Amiva maynard. So for this study, I focus on the Amiva, Ragged Island Amiva, Amiva aubrei by Littoralis, and the species found at the preserve, Amiva aubrei thoracii. And it is to note, not only the Amiva Maynard is listed on the IUCN, and it is listed as vulnerable. All the rest of species aren't listi listed on the IUCN um, list. So for the aim of this study, I wanted to get a general idea of how many numbers were out there and note all observations. So... At the preserve, I walked around daily for about four days to see where I can find the amoebas and where are they most concentrated. I noticed that they were most concentrated in the beds, the, bo the economic botany area, and this area in general right here, in the open where they would forage. I then selected another site or somewhere else. So I decided to go to Ragged Island and see what the population was down there, seeing that it was a different subspecies. So I walked the entire Ragged Island to see where they were most concentrated. So we went all the way around, and then I settled for the old cemetery just below the, below the settlement of Duncan Town. I also went to Little Ragged Island for, an, for a day. So how did I go about assessing the population of these animals? Well, after I picked my study site, I then visited these sites daily for, say, from 8 a.m. till 5 a.m. in the evening to make sure I get the animals that came out to forage and the animals that just came out to bask. I then constructed a noose out of a long piece of stick, dental floss, or thread. After I would noose the animal, I would then record the snout to vent t um, length and the total body length, then record the data. I will also note if the animal was male or female, count all the femoral pores on each animal, whether it was male or female, and then mark them to prevent recapture in the site. Because I was at each site in Ragged Island for 11 days, and at the preserve for four to six weeks. Something of that sort. So what did this, what, what results did I get? So at the Leon, uh, in Eleuthera, I visited two sites. So at the Leon Levy Preserve, which is LLNPP, I spotted, I had 129 sightings. Now I say sightings because it doesn't equate to individuals because Afterwards, I then realized that these animals are habitual, and each day I went out, I count every animal I saw, and some of these might have been repeats because I went the same place. And at the lighthouse point, I saw 16 individuals. 
I captured 28 at the preserve and one at Lighthouse Point. And out of the results, I got 11 females and 18 males. When I went to Ragged Island, I saw 154 sightings, and that's inclusive of the entire island, which I walked, and the cemetery which I surveyed for those 11 days. I only captured 11 individuals at that site, and on Little Ragged Island, I captured four and had 11 sightings. On Hawkey, we, I saw 52 in, individuals because that was only for an, a day or a couple hours we went to Hawkey, but I was unable to capture any of them because the, the vegetation was so dense. It was hard to maneuver the noose and myself after the lizard. And I don't know if anyone has ever seen a blue tail lizard, but they're pretty fast. Once they get going, they get going. They don't stick around to ask for your number. <laughs> they're out of there. So in total for Ragged Island, I saw at 216, 217 sightings and 15 individuals. I then plotted this to get this information. So for females, in Eleuthera, the general, the average snout to vent length size was 7.39, and the average length of the animal was 21.46 centimeters, while on Ragged Island, it was 6.83 centimeters, and the total length was 23.67 centimeters. Now, the results reflected here for the Ragged Island study isn't really that reflective of the population because it was only three individuals that were females in this um, table right here. So more data is needed to get an accurate um, length of the animal. In males, in Eleuthera, the average snout to vent length was 8.73 centimeters and the average total length was 28.92 centimeters. The thing with the Eleuthera study, a lot of the males were really large. Most of them were over 29 centimeters in total length. I mean, the largest being 40 centimeters, which was kind of crazy. The, while on Ragged Island, the to the average um, snout to vent length was 7.2 centimeters, and the total length was 23.05 centimeters. Like I said before, the information for Ragged Island and even Eleuthera isn't indicative of the average size of the species there because we need more data for that. So I also made observation of the animals. And I noted mate garden in both species. So you have, this is the thoracii in Eleuthera. They were habitual. I proved this. How did I prove this? Because I marked the animals and I went to the sites daily, I could then see each individual in a general area where I caught them and I released them. The both species have different morphological um, differences. So in the Eleuthera species, this would be, the animal tend to lose its stripes, and his, he has this really bright snout. Whereas the Ragged Island species, the older males will still maintain the stripe hair, and then they will have this bright blue scale color right underneath their tummy. And the, their snout wouldn't be as brightly colored as the Eleuthera species. The males and the females in both species were um, dimorphic, meaning that they were different. This is the bilateralis, Ragged Island species. In males of both species, I noted this black collar thing. And in the older males, or what I suspect to be the older males, it tends to be more predominant and they tend to have more black on their tummy and their going into their stomach. The females, however, were just this cream color or this 
pale blue color, as in the violet, as in the thoracii. Okay. So, are there any threats? Well, there's a boa. They feed on them in their small when they're small. There are tons of goats on Eleuthera, not on Ragged Island. Habitat destroyers. So, what's the future for this project? What do you know about me? Well, more data is needed. The population of the other subspecies needs to be done. We need to get some genetics on these guys if there isn't any work currently being done, but I'm not aware of that. The habitat range should be established because they tend to range very far from where you see them and where you Maturity and coloration, can that be used to identify how old the animal is? And thank you. These are the people that... So just a quick note about the photo. So when we went to Ragged Island, we did a talk at the school, and we had the kids come out and catch some lizards with us, but they didn't catch any lizards. They just held them and took photos with them. Thank you.